the bottom as fast as you can. No tricks, no detours, just straight down and bobs your uncle. When I heard that a new SSX game was coming out, I had mixed feelings of yay and meh. Yay because the first three SSX games took up a chunk of my childhood and I loved every minute of it. However, there's still that feeling of meh that reminded me that the last two SSX titles weren't nearly as good. Upon playing the new one, I was initially confused with the unfamiliar controls, but as time went on- HOLY SHIT I'M AN AWKWARD 12 YEAR OLD AGAIN! OH HAPPY DAY! The story is dodgy at best. Essentially, these three extreme sports enthusiasts, Zoe, Mac, and Tane, decide they want to make a group called Team SSX, conquer the nine hardest slopes in the world, and in doing so, conquer the planet. So if that wasn't challenging enough, some asshole named Griff comes along and says, Nope, I'm gonna do it first! And while the three are trying to come up with a better name than Team SSX, Griff gets a head start and begins maneuvering the dangerous slopes. So it's up to Team SSX to recruit more snowboarders and beat Griff at his own game. In older SSX games, you'd utilize the shoulder buttons to perform various tricks. However, now you use the right stick in an array of twists and turns to perform such tricks. The shoulder buttons now control the boost, tweak moves for bonus points, rewind time in case you fall into a ravine, and utilize whatever equipment you have. Speaking of equipment, the spread of stuff you need to get with the in-game credits you earn to help you down the mountain is amazing. From picks and axes that improve your steering on ice, to flight suits that help you make it across perfectly long gaps and cliffs, you won't get bored with not trying to kill yourself. If you've played any other EA sports games, you'll know that they always have an aspect where, while you may not win every game you play, you can still advance and win championships with a few losses. SSX is pretty much the same. Most runs will pit you against three other boarders who are essentially the three difficulties in the game, and as long as you place within the top three, you'll advance the story. And while it's not absolutely necessary to win, it's very satisfying to place first ahead of the guy who represents the hard mode. You're pretty much getting everything you'd expect out of an SSX game with some of the unexpected thrown in, like new equipment and control scheme. Overall, the controls, while sometimes wild, are easy to use. The story is pretty predictable, but something like this can be expected from an SSX game, and depending on your aim, the game can either be easy or hard. So whether you're a longtime SSX fan or just looking for something new, then this game is worth the purchase.